Are you curious about the books I have on my shelf? I'm going to share those uh, with you. And uh, as long as we're getting personal, I thought I'd share my house plants with you as well. Come on with me and check it out. Shalom, my friends. Uh, people have been asking about these books you see behind me, so um, I thought I'd share them with you. Start off with this one here. As you can see, that's uh, Aramaic, and uh, here's the Old Testament, as well as the New Testament, all in Aramaic. Um, not the paleo and certainly not the uh, pictograph, more of a uh, strictly Aramaic. And um, I could read it, but it, you know, it would be a lot, a lot of work for me to figure it out, uh, although I could do it. The main reason that I have it is uh, a good friend found a copy of it and mailed it to me. I appreciate that because mostly because it reminds me of the uh, the word that I always saw my jiddu, my grandfather, reading from. His was like that. Now, here is a set of four. These are pretty cool. This is the uh, interlinear Bible, Hebrew to English. And um, uh, the cool thing about this is, you know, if you know a particular verse, particular scripture that you're curious about, uh, we have the English over here, and then over here is the Aramaic Hebrew with uh, uh, English, uh, you know, literal English words right above the, Aram the Aramaic Hebrew, um, along with Strong's Exhaustive Concordance numbers. So uh, that's a pretty quick reference. And uh, the thing there is to, to grab the uh, Aramaic Hebrew translate them into the pictograph, and do our studies like we do. Um, now, the first three volumes are basically the first uh, covenant, and then the fourth volume is the uh, renewed covenant, but I don't bother with that because it's all in Greek. And you know the old saying, that's Greek to me. Um, Greek is cool but I want to know the Aramaic Hebrew. Uh, then, of course, here I have my Hallelujah Scriptures. Uh, this is an old King James. Uh, just for reference, you know, I have other versions too. Here um, I have four publications from Hallelujah Scriptures. The um, Name Meanings book, pretty cool to have. Then I have the uh, book of Yovalim. Very cool stuff. These are from the Dead Sea Scrolls, uh, interpreted by that wonderful translation team the Hallelujah Scriptures uh, has. Here's the book of uh, Hanoch. Um, if you look at my playlist on my channel, you see that uh, I have the entire book of Hanoch. I read it uh, with you. And then I have the book of uh, Yashar. These are, uh, you can get all of these yourself from uh, hallelujahscriptures.com. And uh, I got two copies of this one here. I'm not sure who wrote that. <laughs> yeah, but you can order one at the end of the video. <laughs> uh, here's uh, New American Standard, NIV, Dead Sea Scrolls Pocket Edition. This reference stuff. Uh, here is The Coming Prince by Sir Robert Anderson. Uh, pretty cool book. Pretty cool book. He's the one who said that uh, Satan's greatest achievement and trick is getting people to believe that he doesn't exist. A lot of people believe that. 
Here's the Book of Enoch. I do not suggest you bother buying one of these. This is the one that I, I looked at for years and I was like, bizarre, weird, strange, hard to grab a hold of. Um, rather than that, you get the Book of Hanoch. That's the Book of Enoch. Hallelujah Scriptures. This one came out and I was like, good grief. It's easy to understand. It reads like the word. Uh, it's pretty amazing, but true. And I do uh, encourage you to get a copy of that one. Over here is some personal stuff. This is a, a, a pretty cool little book. Gift many years ago. And inside, you know, there's blank pages. Uh, there are many pages that aren't blank. Kind of some diary stuff that I put together and then oh these four books here these are so cool man they're ancient <laughs> the copyright on this is uh, 1923 I don't know if you can see it it's embossed and it says uh, Odell's Carpenters and Builders Guide number one my dad gave me these I've had them for many years and uh, you know it starts off telling you about nails and then it goes into tools uh, all kinds of stuff about tools and as you go through it gets into some other stuff uh, here's uh, volume 3 and it shows you how to build things I'm telling you Anything under the sun that you could think of building is in this, these books, tells you how to do it. And, uh, of course, you know, it's always hand tools. We're talking 1923, but unbelievably cool. I love those books. <clears throat> this here is just my telephone book, personal numbers and stuff. Here we have Strong's Exhaustive Concordance of the Bible. Big one. Every word that appears in the word is listed here. Um, you know, like if you look up uh, the word uh, over here is linen, and it's that column, this whole column here, this whole column here, and it just starts with Genesis, goes all the way down to Revelation. Every occurrence of the word linen and then next to that is the uh, Strong's Exhaustive uh, Concordance number. There's like uh, one, two, maybe five or six different numbers, meaning there's five or six different uh, words. Um, in the first covenant books, of course, it's Aramaic Hebrew, but then in the renewed covenant, it's Greek, and I don't bother with that. So for that, I go to this one. Uh, the Aramaic English New Testament. Very cool book. High quality paper and everything. But it has uh, the uh, Renewed Covenant. Aramaic Hebrew on the right side. English on the left. Um, and of course, that's not much help unless you can read. They took the Aramaic and uh, originally this was an Aramaic on the right side but some people were complaining you know we're more familiar with modern Hebrew so they translated the uh, Aramaic into modern Hebrew not a problem they're all the same letters just written in a different script uh, and this is primarily where I go uh, when I'm in, into finding the Aramaic Hebrew words for the renewed covenant books now, uh, if you look at my playlists, uh, I just started a new one. So if you go to my channel down on the very bottom of the page, you'll see my playlists. And the newest one uh, is uh, related to my, my latest book, Lashon HaKodesh Kadam. Uh, that may be arriving today, and I'll be mailing out your copies this week. Um, but it's about the Odeote. And um, in there I have two videos that show you how to use Strong's for the First Covenant books and how to use um, uh, this book for the Renewed Covenant. And they have a website with a lexicon 
and uh, some very cool tools uh, that where you can go there and you can find the words and the odiote uh, for all of the Renewed Covenant books, you know, from Matthew through Revelation uh, to do your studies with. And I show you how to go about that in those videos in that playlist, so you want to go there. Here, here's a hefty, beautiful book. Look at that, huh? <laughs> uh, hardcover. The Englishman's Hebrew Concordance of the Old Testament. And um, it just has, you know, uh, more information about the Odeo and words and where they're located according to scriptures and so on. Uh, pretty cool book to have. Here's the same thing, not quite as big, but the Englishman's Greek Concordance of the New Testament. Never touch it. Uh, you know, years ago I dug into these a lot more than I do now. Here's the uh, Expository Dictionary of Bible Words. I used to think it was a pretty cool book. Now I won't touch it because it's just, it's just full of westernized, abstract definitions of Hebrew words that are wrong. I mean, it's, this is what Satan wants you to think those Hebrew words mean. So we don't go there anymore. I may, uh, may get rid of some of these eventually. This, uh, this is a really big KJV, a really cool friend of mine who's gone home, he's not here anymore. He found this and he gave it to me. Um, I don't know, I guess he didn't know what to do with it. I don't, I don't use it, it's just sentimental because he gave it to me and because it was owned by a um, assistant senior bishop. Uh, here in Somerset, New Jersey, just a town over from me, his name was ne Nehemiah Greer, and uh, he went. He was called home in 2004, and uh, my good friend uh, found this and gave it to me in 2009. A little note up here on the top says, "Never alone, Hawkins." I don't know what that means. I don't see any other scribblings in here. But anyway, this is what that is. Now this one is my beloved NIV wide margin uh, copy of the word. This is, uh, it's precious to me because I, um, I put all of my notes, there's footnotes, there's not much white space. Uh, I don't know if you can see all that, but you know, I just filled it up with notes upon notes upon notes over the years. So I, I do still dig into this. You know, if I'm looking at a scripture, I'll, I'll use that to reference the notes I have, uh, information that I've garnered over the years. Um, here's another NIV study Bible. I should get rid of that one. I do not like footnotes and, and those kind of things. It's just more of, you know, what Satan's been trying to do to keep us away from the beginning. It's just more abstract interpretations of what's being said. Garbage. This here is uh, the Amplified Bible. And... Um, you should have a copy. It's good for reference because the Amplified Bible takes the original Aramaic, Hebrew, and or Greek. And uh, next to the words, they'll put some stuff in brackets and just expound on the, uh, the original meaning uh, intended. And um, does a pretty good job, although you want to be cautious about westernized abstract interpretations. Here is a large copy of the Dead Sea Scrolls. Um, good for reference, but you know, the Dead Sea Scrolls are very fragmented pieces uh, of scriptures. And um, they, those fragments serve well to, to confirm the first covenant books and their content. Here, 
paperback, but man, huge, huh? Uh, this is the um, um, Aramaic Peshitta, translated into English. Good for reference. Don't use it much these days. I mean, these days, to me, it's really become all about the Odiot. Um, here is another one. The Word of Yahweh, or the Word of Yahweh. This, I got this, and man, I was so excited when I found this. Uh, it was 2005. It was the first time I could ever get my hands on a copy of the Word with the Father's and the son's name restored, as well as, you know, like Mary, that you'll see Miriam. Instead of James, you'll see Yaakov. Uh, they've restored all the names. Uh, however, other than that, it's KJV. But, you know, to have the Father's name restored, I was excited. And I'm telling you, I was looking and looking and look for years. It wasn't until 2005 I found this, and if it wasn't for the Internet, I guess I never would have. Here... This is a cool book. I'll, I'll put a link to this uh, in the more info section underneath this video. You might want to grab a copy. It's the Ancient Hebrew Lexicon of the Bible, and it's by Jeff A. Benner. Pretty cool guy. And it's just loaded with information about the ancient pictograph uh, alphabet, the Odiot, uh, and ancient Hebrew. Aramaic. Uh, it's all about that. Uh, I think it's a bit complicated and in-depth for the average person. It's really, you know, if you really want to dig in, uh, there's some cool stuff. But um, I don't know that it's all that necessary. Uh, I think what we're doing here in, with my videos, it's what it's all about. Um, but if you really want to get into some background, deep stuff, uh, Jeff Benner did a good job with this. I'll give you a link for that. Then I have uh, Vine's Concise Dictionary of the Bible. Garbage. <laughs> uh, you know, in the old days, this used to, I thought it was cool stuff. No, this is the westernized abstract garbage uh, giving you ideas that, you know, it's the devil's work, man. He, he wants to keep us away from the beginning. You know, the, the beginning, that's the uh, pictograph, audio. That's what we want. This I got this uh, back in 2007. It's called The Power New Testament Revealing Jewish Roots, William J. Morford. Um, pretty cool book, you know, about Jewish roots and so on. And then, finally, I have this piece of garbage. It's called The Lost Books of the Bible. And uh, I do not suggest you get it. It's good for reference for me. You know, people ask me about those demonic doctrines <laughs> that were created, you know, around 300 A.D. Um, you know, it's the Book of Mary... Book of Nicodemus, uh, stuff like that, but it's it's all corrupt uh, doctrines of demons. Know thy enemy, perhaps, is the uh, idea behind that book. Had that for a long time. I mean, decades. But uh, so now you know what's sitting here all the time when you're looking at my videos. And uh, as long as we're being personal, I, th uh, I thought I'd share my plants, my house plants with you because uh, I really do enjoy those. So check that out. Check this out. We'll take a look at my plants and then I'll close. This guy here is my alocasia. Let me zoom in a bit. He's really got some striking looking leaves, doesn't he? And also, you know, if you're looking for a mister, Mister, this one here, uh, it's called Solo. Uh, it is the coolest mess, Mister ever. I mean, check this. I don't know if you can hear it. Uh, 
it is just the coolest. It's pressurized. You now you pump this here and you add more pressure to it with just a little flick of that button. Uh, it, you just get the finest mist there is. You can also uh, adjust it where it'll shoot a, a thin stream up to two feet. It's good for chemicals too. Uh, if you're into plants, uh, I'm going to put a link for you to get this mister. I think it's like $18, but you'll never find anything better. You can see I also have this one here. Um, whoop, see that already got clogged up, didn't it? It's, you know, it doesn't last very long and it doesn't do as great a mist. Now here we have my vines. Uh, this is Adam and Herman. <laughs> this is actually called Adam's Choice and uh, this vine here, is the leaf is a little longer and uh, narrower and that's called um, Little Herman. And then here I have um, my philodendron. There's actually three different types here. This is my Diefenbach. This guy, I mean, man, he is so thick the uh, the leaves, there are so many leaves in here, it's amazing. But look at this. It's about as thin as a straw. He's starting to open up. There's another one over here. Can you see that? It's as thin as a straw. They just shoot up out of the middle of this thing, and then they start uh, uncurling once they get clear, I guess. And here we have my peace lily. Um, periodically, uh, a shoot comes up out of the middle, and has a um, a white little rod uh, about two inches long and then right under it a big red dark red leaf uh, blossoms it's pretty cool and um, I you know I'm, I'm focusing on getting uh, as many plants in my place as I can because you know they bring the outdoors in I like that and also um, it just reminds me of Romans it says that, you know, all of creation, including these plants, are eagerly waiting for the Netchatef, eagerly waiting for the B'nai Elohim to be revealed. I mean, they're aware, my friends, that this world is in darkness, and they're looking forward to uh, Abba Father's restoration of all things. They're looking forward to the Netchatef and to um, finally being without darkness. They're aware of it, too. So that's it, my friends. A little personal time with Alan. <laughs> I hope this video has been a very hard to you. Shalom, my friends. Son of man is. Some say John the Baptist, others say Elijah. Still others, Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. But I pose the question today now who?